everybody, and welcome to Sega Stuff, Episode 6. I am Mike Keltner, and with me, as always, is our co-host, or, or the other host, we're both co-hosts, <laughs> Brian Trusty. Hello. And uh, it's been a while since we've done this podcast, but we've uh, got it's, some It's time been a long today. time. So I'm looking forward to talking about some Sega. I am always looking forward to talking about Sega with you, Mike, and... Uh, yeah, like you like you just said, it's been a long time. So, yeah. Yeah. Sega. 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 <laughs> nice. So we should start off with some Sega news. Yeah, let's talk about some Sega news. All right. Did you have any? Did you want to touch on some Sega news first, or would you like me to go? Um, I will start with some Sega news. Uh, the uh, Rise of Nightmares. Is coming out. It's yes. a game for Xbox 360 for the Kinect. Um, it looks to be House of the Deadish. Right. Uh, and I, I have to say, I'm upset because I really want this game. However, right. why it is, are you upset? Oh, well, I'm upset because it's for Kinect only. Oh. And 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 keeping in the tradition, Sega has made a game. That is going to cost at least twice as much as it should because I need an awesome peripheral. And right. What I mean by saying, in keeping with the tradition, there was a House of the Dead three was released on the Xbox, but it was eighty bucks because you had to get a gun controller with it. Yes. I wanted it so bad, but at the time the the extra price made it not a wise purchase. In did my you eyes. get that? I think Eventually, you that. yeah, I yeah. did. That was I had really awesome. It, it was, and it had House of the Dead 2 on it. And that was the best gun peripheral for any system ever, still to this day, I'd say. Yeah, I have that gun still, and I barely play my original Xbox, but I love that gun. It's a great gun, um, and that's a great game. The best way to play it now, though, is, of course, on the Wii. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so like I said, you have to have a Kinect for this game, and I don't even know how that works. I've watched a trailer... I don't yeah. know how you're gonna control the this hands. Kind of show up in front of you when, probably when you're doing that with your hands. From what I've seen, I would love to have a controller in my hands and control that character. Yeah, I would really like to. I'd be nice if it was an option, but unfortunately, I think it's exclusively Connect only. So, yeah, it it looks good. If you have a Connect, I would look into it. I'm not gonna recommend you buy it. I've not played it yet. Um, also, it's not out yet. If you um, pre-order it from GameStop, there's supposed to be some uh, some special stuff, isn't there? You're supposed yes. to be some uh, exclusive I pre-order stuff. Believe so. I don't know a whole lot of the details. Do you happen to have those, Brian? No, I don't. But um, but yeah, that game, like Mike said, it was it's kind of House of the Deadish. It looks really serious, though. So and it looks like it, it looks frightening. There was a there's like a little um, clown doll running around, was trying to bite you on the on the on the trailer, and it's a it's a first person shooter, I guess, kind of on rails first yeah. person shooter, I'm assuming, because you uh, it's motion control. So, all right, I have it here. If you were to pre-order this game from GameStop, you get a mini zombie pet theme and gamer picture pack. Uh, you get a mini zombie from the game that will interact with the player's avatar on the Xbox 360 dashboard. Oh, wow. Uh, gamer picks. So it, it seems it's a, it's digital content with a miniature zombie. Oh, right. And, and it's not like you get an actual zombie as your avatar. Right, It's just right. a zombie that's, like, next to your avatar. That's still cool, though. I mean... That is cool. I am the quickest person to shell out for something zombie-related, so... Right. So that kind of interests me, and I'll look into it. And I think we have here, hopefully... We have a release date. I I don't see it, but well, this the is price is right. Uh, I mean, forty nine ninety nine for a new uh, new game isn't too bad nowadays, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, sadly, it comes with I don't know how much the Connect is going nowadays, but going for that is. Uh, but I think it was one hundred and fifty at release, and so that makes it a two hundred dollar buy in for me, which I still might do because. Let's face it, I'm bad with my money, <laughs> but <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Oh, spending money on Sega is always good. Mm. I I'll say that I would be a lot happier if they were to release it on the PS3, 
and I could use it with my move. A, a real yeah, and you sound know what? Investment. It really seems like it would work better on the move anyway because you have a physical controller. Even though even the motion sensitivity games, you're holding something. Yeah. Which I'd rather be doing than just pretending to be holding a gun or pretending to be holding a knife and not feeling it. Yeah. No, no vibration or anything like that. You need that heft in your hands. Everything right. about the Kinect not having a controller, it seems wrong to me. I agree. I mean, what I hear a lot of people talk about is that they want like a minority report type. Yeah, and they are kind of trying to do that. And I, I, I agree that that seems cool, but still, I like to have something in my hand. Right. Um... But speaking of things that, that you know should be available on the PS3, our next piece of news... Uh, yes. Um, Sonic CD. Sonic CD. Is going to be available on the PlayStation 3, yeah. as well as the Xbox Network, or Xbox uh, Live, and PC Download. Yeah. So... Which it's already technically was on the PC, but they're revamping it for the widescreen and HD graphics. Yeah. Now, hadn't you said there was also going to be some uh, some phone downloads? Yes. Oh yeah, Android and iPhone. Android and iPhone. See, that's that's nice. Um, and th and I don't know if I believe it a hundred percent yet because Sega has never ever released anything for the Android. Well, I'd love to see him do that. Android's Android's getting a lot bigger though. I don't think true. Sega can ignore them for much longer. So that's true. And I would just. I would just love to have Sega CD on my phone. Or Sonic CD, rather. Sega <laughs> CD. No, Sega CD as well. Yeah, I'd I, love to have Sega CD. Uh, I made the same mistake when I was typing up our liner notes for the show. I wrote Sonic. I wrote Sega CD did you? <laughs> instead of Sonic CD. Um, it's a common mistake because well, Sega is Sonic. So Yeah, and they're so interchangeable. <laughs> I mean, if you think of... If you want to think of what... Honestly, I always thought that, that was one of the best Sonic games. And the best game probably you can pick up on the Sega CD. Yeah. It, it that is... And it's one of the best Sonic games, really, I'd say. Yeah. You can pick yeah. up. So, I'm looking forward to that, uh, especially coming to my PS3. Uh, yep. And my very own co-host here has joined this generation. He, he yes. got himself a PS3. And we talked about this a couple episodes ago where you were like, we need to get you into this current generation of gaming and get yeah. you a PlayStation 3. And... Um, I took that to heart, and I went out and got a PlayStation 3 finally. So, so what's what's good to see? Uh, the good news here is that we can both play Sonic CD. That's right. On our PS3s when it comes out, or iPhone, Android. Yeah, and, and it, to be honest, it, I'll get it on my PlayStation 3 and my Android phone. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm gonna buy it twice. You're 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 a bigger mobile gamer than I am. I will not get it on my iPhone just because my iPhone is a, it's a, a data device for me. Yeah. Um. But but still, I'm glad the option is there. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it says here that it would be it'll be playable at PAX Prime 2011. So. And that is actually this weekend. So that's right. Yeah, that's right around the corner. So we should be able to like uh, hear some more stuff after it's been played. I'm sure we can get some, read some reviews on that or something. Yeah, uh, we keep your eyes open for impressions. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know if I should pimp things, but where I go for most of my game news is IGN.com. I'm a fan. Not gonna lie. Um, I've always liked IGN. Also, um, I know you've got some Sega specific sites you check out. Or yeah, actually, uh, another Sega podcast. I'm going to go ahead and plug them because uh, they just have a, another podcast now. One of my favorite podcasts of all time because I'm such a Sega fanboy is Sega Addicts. And you can go Sega to Sega-Addicts.com. Okay. And you can read more about the Sonic CD coming to Xbox Live and PlayStation Network on there. And they also have a, a podcast. It's pretty good. All right. So <clears throat> that's that's cool. Now, uh, that's pretty exciting news, but I think this next piece is even more su exciting. We have listener mail. That's right. I, I was stoked when my uh, Sega stuff at Gmail uh, thing popped up on my Android phone and I read it and it said that we should discuss the Nomad. All right. And, and, and so that was from who now? Sethophis is what it was. Uh. All right. So Sethophis has sent us an email asking us to discuss the Nomad. 
and we would like to keep our listener happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want them to keep listening, so. Yeah, exactly. So, the Nomad was this wonderful device. It, it was a brick, basically, <laughs> that you could put Sega games into and play them. That's right. You could, you could act, it was a portable Genesis, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like you're sitting there playing your game Game Boy or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's like, beep, boop, beep, boop, this, is, this sucks. And then all of a sudden you're like, I really wish I could play my Sega Genesis. Well, the, you're <laughs> in luck, little Jimmy. <laughs> what? Why? Because we've got a Nomad. <laughs> Ow, this is heavy, and that kind of hurt. <laughs> Quit whining, <laughs> jerk. No, uh, yeah, the Sega Nomad, it's a hefty little system. I believe it had the six-button layout. It did. It had the six-button layout. It, they were really cool, uh, shiny oval buttons. Hey, kitty! <laughs> the, the kitty! <laughs> the, the, the kitty again! Are Every podcast. With our podcast. No, the, uh, 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 the kitty's getting the cord. So anyway, yeah, the Nomad. Uh, as I said, um, it's got the six-button layout. Or that, well, Mike said that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal it as my own. <laughs> yes, I am a genius. It has a six-button layout. But um, it played Sega Genesis games. Yeah, you, it took you, no batteries. Uh, huh? There, were no ba- there was no battery uh, placed on the system itself. Do you remember that? Th- to play it, you'd have to put a battery pack on the back. Really? Or plug it in. There was I, no There was no get around that. I, I swear I saw it like had like eight no, batteries wait, wait. or something. Did it have a battery compartment? I think it did. I'm just... Totally off today. I, I'm not sure. I, um, I there's one upstairs. Up. I used not... to have one. I don't know why. But yeah, I think it takes like eight batteries. It does take batteries. But um, it had an extra thing on it that you could connect to the back, and it made it twice as big. Which, you know, that system was not quite big enough. It, it no, really it, needed it only that. needed to be bigger. That was its one downfall. It was too small. You know I mean? um, but yeah, it, it was it was just a little like rectangle, like like a brick, like I was saying. You you put the Sega game in the top, yeah, and uh, it stuck out a bit. But yeah, it was it was a portal Genesis, uh, and it was pretty cool for the time. I mean, yeah. nowadays they could do it a lot smaller, yeah, more compact. and they have we, they actually have um, small handheld Genesis now officially licensed by Sega. Really? Is that uh? Does it come with? Are there carts? Is it emulated? They, they have ones that it's an emulator, but it mm-hmm. actually plays carts. So and ROMs. That's cool. So, yeah, it is very cool. I, I'd like to have one, but that's okay. It's, it's a Genesis clone. It's the same people who made the. It's at games. Mm-hmm. That's the people who made it. And now is this like they take actual Genesis cartridges, or do they make cartridges? It takes actual Genesis cartridges. That's, I've not seen this. So I'll have to look it up. Yeah, it's um. Sonic's on it. Sonic's on the uh, cover of it and stuff. That's pretty cool. Anything with Sonic is very, very cool. I would have to say. I I tend to agree. So but yeah, Rise of Nightmares is on Connect. Exclusive stuff from GameStop. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we've got Sega and Sonic, Sonic CD. <laughs> so we have Sega CD for the Sonic CD um, <laughs> coming out for all these. It's pretty much every platform except for the Wii. And I'm assuming that's because of the downloadable, like this, it has an awesome soundtrack. Yeah. And that alone would take up the space required by the Wii. Uh, it, it, they have a, a, a space restriction of 40 megabytes or so mm-hmm. for downloadable content or downloadable games. And you cannot fit awesome Sonic CD onto that small, small amount of space. And you won't catch me saying this very often, but I almost think that the Wii is a little bit smart for that move. Uh, on the PS3, I've recently switched out my 120 gig hard drive for a 500 gig hard drive because I was running out of space. Was that easy to do? It was. It was a pra- fairly uh, easy process. It was lengthy uh, because I've had my PS3 for a while. I had a lot of data. You have to back it up, uh-huh. and then you have to swap right. hard drives. You have to install firmware, and you have to re-image the drive. It takes time. Huh. But uh, but it wasn't hard. It just took time. But, you know, I'm. A lot of people are looking to this future where we can download any game. And that's a beautiful thought. But I don't want to get download. As long as it's all on the cloud. I I don't want to download a, you know, 25 to 
50 gig game. That's you know that's what these Blu-rays are capable of. True. True. And yeah, I don't want to download a, that. And on I don't my care system. if you have a terabyte of space with games that uh, you know have gigs and gigs of uh, space. It's going to take it up faster than you think. Yeah. Um, so the large games. Now we're not really going to face this problem with Sonic CD, but. Right, because it's 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 an actual port, you know. It, you know, it would be a gig at most, and I think that's even a bit high. I yeah, I don't think it'll be a gig. But I think it'll be seven hundred megabytes. But but yeah, that, that's just my little tangent. I I am not looking forward to the digital future for huge games. I'm not either, and, and one of the reasons is because I like to own the box and have the instructions, put it on my shelf, and look at it. You know, I'm the same way. Although, I have gotten over that a little bit for movies and music i mean i've got my music collections almost all digital right um and i have taken to uh to, you know downloading a copy of a movie every now and then or just streaming through netflix um over necessarily buying the case all the time right but but still i don't feel comfortable doing that for my my games yet and i don't know that i ever will I honestly think that I won't. Games still need a case, a booklet. You need that moment where you go into the store, you pick it up, you smell it. You ever smell your new games? Oh, who, who doesn't? <laughs> exactly. That's what I always thought. So, I mean... I smell your new games. I remember the... I used to buy Genesis games, and the, the plastic smelled like, I don't know, like tomatoes or something. And Yeah, it smelled really good. I loved it. I don't like tomatoes, but... <laughs> yeah, but it was just the fact that it was a game. Yeah, yeah, it was a new game, something to do. But yeah, um, so... With that, let's move on to our games of the... Uh, previously, Games of the Week. Wait, this time around, it's going to be our game of the... Wait. Sorry? Oh, well, I thought I was going to say something else about the Nomad, but that's okay. That's good. Okay. Nomad. Nomad. There you go, Sethophis. Is thank you for writing, and remember, if you want to contact us, please uh, write us at segastuff at gmail dot com. We would love to take your take your questions. That's right. Any questions you have, we will answer them on air. Exactly. Um, so, are we? Should we move on then? Let's move on. All right. These are what would we usually call our game of the week, but as we've not done this for uh, about a month and a half, we can't quite call it that. But but these are games that we chose to talk about today. Right. And starting with Brian's choice. My choice is Sonic Advance for the Game Boy Advance. And um, let's see. It was designed by Yuji Naka, which is cool because he created Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. And um, it was released, let's see, February 3rd, 2002. And then it was also released October 6, 2003 for the Engage, and it was re-released as a game called Sonic N. And that was just a little smaller screen version. Uh, it was a little choppier and slower, yeah. but it was on the Engage. I had that game, Sonic N. But I had it also on the Game Boy Advance, and I chose to play it on the Game Boy Advance. Well, because the Engage, as much as we loved the idea of play, being able to play games on our phone, come on, that's a thing of the past. Right. <laughs> No, um... That, the, that's, that's never going to happen. The Engage, Games and phones, we use them to talk, okay? <laughs> the Engage was before its time and sadly did not take off like they wanted it to. Oh, um, but I feel like if they made something today and made it like Android-based, it might have worked. Like, like to say the same. Sony, yeah, Xperia Play. The Xperia Play, which... I, I don't know how good that's going to do because it just came out, but I think it's neat. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'd like to have a D-pad slide out of my phone. That is appealing. It's the thing. It is for me is the Xperia Play is not my ideal phone. It looks cool because it's got a D pad, and that's amazing for portable gaming. Right. But that's also a phone commitment. It is Android. Um, but you know, I'm looking at some uh, some Galaxy S twos, some yep. some Nexus. You know, like maybe that. wait till uh, Christmas. Yeah. Because they're gonna pump out a bunch of new phones around then. So I'm um, you know, <clears throat> and I've got the iPhone right now but it's just that it seems like a downgrade for the thing from the things that are out and the things that are coming out right and so it is and you know they should have done it before is the thing they could have done it early android 
You know what I mean? If they well, did that before, it really, really would have worked. It's the opposite of what Engage did. Yeah. It's kind of, it seems to me that I almost think it's obvious to start making a line of controller peripherals, almost. For your phone. <clears throat> I mean, I guess there's too many different styles of phone, but... Well, they have a really good controller peripheral for the iPhone that I saw at a Walgreens recently. Oh, yeah? For $5, yeah. It actually just adds two PlayStation grips to your iPhone. Okay. It doesn't add any buttons or anything, because the buttons are always on the iPhone, but I thought it was fairly interesting, but unfortunately, I don't have an iPhone. Well, I was actually thinking something that would add buttons. Um, I am not at all a fan of on-screen buttons. Oh, yeah, I'm not a fan either. Um, and I just don't think I don't think they're necessary. I'd like to do away with them. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to talk about Sonic Advance now. All right. Um, the game features four playable characters, which include Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. So you get to be Amy for once, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. She has a hammer and she hits it on the ground. She spins herself into the air and it it adds new things. And um, in the old games, in the old Sonic games, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, they all were, they all ran the same speed. They all had the same things pretty much, except Tails and Knuckles had one up on Sonic actually, because yeah. yeah. they could fly and glide, and Knuckles could climb walls, which could make you do anything in that game at the time. I actually always felt that Sonic had a bit more of a fluent ground control though yeah I, that could be i you know knuckles not quite as floaty knuckles can climb tails right. can fly but if you really wanted to run properly you were sonic that could be yeah now from your experience i just this is a bit of an offshoot but do you feel like playing as amy felt natural in the sonic universe amy yeah it, uh, only an adventure only adventure. I only okay. feel like she fits in adventure because that the, it all changed in adventure. Yeah. Everything changed, like the feeling of Sonic and everything. Not, not that it was bad, right. but I felt like she felt in that she would go in that world. Okay. But she came from Sonic CD, I believe. Yeah, she was uh she was kidnapped by Metal Sonic. Yeah, she and I, I, the only really reason that they did that I felt like was because of the princess and Mario. Yeah, she might have been. Chasing Mario, I th I feel like for some reason Sonic's always been chasing Mario, um, and it's kind of a shame because I feel like Sonic's good on its own. Oh, but Sonic's great, and it's a whole different world. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not trying to be Mario, but they're in the same category. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sonic Advance. Sonic Advance. Um, there were two sequels for that game, Sonic Advance 2 and Sonic Advance 3. Though They were both really good games, too. But uh, 3 got a little too crazy. Mm -hmm. 2, if you, want, if you want to just talk about the series, the best of the series, I'd say get 2. Okay. Because it's just like the best from 1 and the best from 3. And in 3, they just went too far, in my opinion. They had a, the, the Chow Garden was back. Okay, okay. So you had a tiny Chow Garden, which you could hook into your um, GameCube. And take your Chow from Sonic Adventure to Battle, uh -huh. and put it into your tiny Chow Garden on your Game Boy Advance, just like you would do on the Dreamcast with the VMU. Uh, so you could take your tiny Chow with you, feed him, play with him, bring him back, and put him back into your game, and he have gr he's grown or uh, whatever you've done in your uh, tiny Chow Garden is in the actual Chow Garden. And I just think that's great. And I've always been big on raising chows. Like, I've gotten really deep into it, raised all these different kinds of chows. There's a night chow that flies around, looks like knights, and it's just really, really fun stuff if you, like, want to go Tamagotchi Extreme. That's what that is, Tamagotchi Extreme. Well, I never quite got the reason for the chows. Not a big fan myself, but I'm, you know, I'm glad it's out there for those who like it. Yeah, I have, I have fun with it. But, um, but it's definitely not. It's 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 like after you do everything on Sonic, that's that's something I might go back and do. It gives a little bit of replayability. Um, yeah, it was just like it was a side-scrolling Sonic game. It was just like the ones on the Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, which were really cool because we they kind of went 3D for a while, and it's like everybody missed this two two D side-scrolling Sonic games. And then they were back on the uh, Game Boy Advance, and they were they were awesome. Yeah. So I definitely would recommend checking out Sonic Advance, or if you happen to have an Engage, I guess go on eBay and search for Sonic in, buy it for a dollar. Yeah, and it's a it's a great game, Sonic Advance. That's cool. You know, I've always felt 
these like these portable exclusives. Like it's kind of sad because they they fit in the canon, but so many people probably never play them, never experience them. Yeah, because not everybody plays portable games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my game this week is uh, is a bit of a gem. You might see that we were going with a Sonic theme here a bit. We are um, talking an awful lot of Sonic. It's just kind of strange. On a Sega podcast, who thought? Yeah. <laughs> this story is not exactly Sonic. My game this week is Knuckles Chaotix. Oh, what? Snap! <laughs> now, everybody obviously played this game because it was on 32X, and that sold gangbusters. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, actually, I think I own one of the only three. But <laughs> yeah, I, I had the other one. I had another one. I don't know who bought the other one. But, uh, I think that was yeah. Jeff. It, it might have been. Um, <laughs> when the 32X came out, people were just like, I'm done adding peripherals to my system. They should have put out a 32-bit system. That's that's beside the point. But I had one, and one of the few games I had on it was Knuckles Chaotix. And this is an interesting little game. Um, it was uh, developed by Sonic Team uh, with designers Hiroshi Aso and Marihide Kobayashi. Yeah. Yeah, Hard I don't pronounce. speak Japanese. Yeah. Um, and it was released in March of 1995 in North America, and strangely enough, April 21st, 1995, in Japan. It came out in America before Japan. Interesting. That doesn't happen a lot. That does not happen a lot. But, uh, so the gameplay is, it's, it's a twist on Sonic gameplay. It is a 2D side-scrolling platformer where you play as Knuckles as the main character. Um, and apparently there are two different storylines. Uh, the, uh, the American story was that Knuckles guarding a carnival island, and Dr. Robotnik comes there to steal a power emerald that's powering the island, and he traps some guests that have been visiting the carnival island. See, that makes sense, because now I remember, uh, as you're saying that, after the when you get your um, your secondary person, mm -hmm. when they tether to your ring or whatever, yep. they're like frozen inside this capsule and you have to get them out. And, and he brings up a good point. One of the strangest things about this game is that you have a second character. The tethering? Yeah. You, you're, Knuckles runs with a ring in his hand at all times. And there's a mystical tether. Now, if you've seen the uh, the invincibility shield in a Sonic game, that is what is tethering the two rings together, pretty much. Yeah, the uh, um, little stars. Um, but yeah, so you run together. You can kind of spin. You there's all kinds of uh, what is it, it called? It brings in an interesting f physics. Physics, yes. Into uh, the game, like a bouncy physics. Yeah, a very bouncy um, tethering. You have to keep track of this other person all the time, physics thing. It, I, I can say honestly that I was not the biggest fan. It's, it's annoying. It, yeah. It's just horrible. It, it, if, if it wasn't for other cool things in the game, it would have made it really bad. Yeah. But um, there was a separate Japanese story uh, that happened uh, right after the events of Sonic and Knuckles, where uh, Dr. Robotnik discovers this island and found a mysterious ring inscribed with the... Uh, descriptions of the Chaos Ring and the, the the ring was infused with the power of the Chaos Emeralds and uh, yeah it was a special like mystical island see um, that makes the ring the ring part of it make a little bit of sense at least yeah it, it does make the ring, pa ring part make more sense and it does more to tie it into the Sega the, the Sonic universe <laughs> Where it's like this island with these ultimate Chaos Intermoles is found and Knuckles is trying to protect them. And these, uh, these characters uh, were being held hostage as they were natives of the island. Uh, the Knuckles Chaotix was not just about Knuckles. There was a gang. Like I said, there were secondary characters. That's right. There were a lot of characters in that one. Uh, you have Knuckles the Echinata, Mighty the Armadillo, um... I think it's Echidna. Echidna? Yeah. I, I never got that right. I used to think it was Enchilada, or enchidna, honestly. Enchidna? Enchidna? Echidna? I, I used to always call him Enchilada. I that I was the Enchilada? I sweared by it. It's like, there's an animal named after this taco. <laughs> <laughs> it 
and it's Knuckles. But yeah, so Echidna, yeah, I can see that. Mighty the Armadillo, Vector the Crocodile, Espio the Vector. Chameleon, and Charmy the Bee. That's right, Charmy um, the Bee. So, yeah, you ran tethered to these characters. All were pretty new. Apparently, Mighty the Armadillo had appeared in the original Sonic the Hedgehog, but I don't know anything about that. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that now, because I thought I knew everything about the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, this, this is according to Wikipedia, and we all know that there's never anything wrong on there. Oh, that can't be wrong. <laughs> but, it's uh, written yeah. by people. It's written by um, Watson. Watson. The IBM nice. computer. But um, yeah, so it was it was a fun little game. I never got very far in it. It it kind of it just didn't feel like a Sonic game, and it, I guess it wasn't. Yeah. Although Brian here tells me that it was originally going to be Sonic Four. Yeah, there's um there are like some ROMs and stuff floating around on the internet, and and uh, some stuff in forums and a few articles that I've read about Sonic Four coming out for the Sega Genesis near the end of its uh, life. And mm -hmm. they scrapped it completely and just turned it into Knuckles Chaotix. They, 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 it used to be um, Sonic Tether to Tails oh. in the same way. Interesting. So, and that was, uh, there was a code name for it, which was Sonic Crackers. Sonic Crackers? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that would have gone over well, but... No, no. But it, that was the code name for it, for Sonic 4 on the Sega Genesis. Which mm -hmm. ended up a really good thing that they didn't do, probably. Because it would have bombed and... It could have possibly hurt Sonic. Yeah. Worse than the uh, Sonic games on the Wii did. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's the game. That's Nickel, Knuckles Chaotix. Um, you know, if you if you run into a 32x in that game, I would say play it. It's probably one of the better games on the 32x. I would say it's probably the best 32x game you can get. Either oh, yeah, wait a minute, except for Tempo. I take that back. I yeah, like tempo. I like Tempo. Tempo was good. Um, and there was also a Doom port on 32X. Yeah, but it's horrible. Was it? Yeah. Okay. That's the worst. That's got to be the worst copy of Doom you can get. But The so music it, was so bad. So definitely check it out. Um, we're going to take a break here for a second and play a Sonic tune. And it's one you might recognize. Wait, wait. I love this episode so far. I called it. First, you called it uh, Sega CD. <laughs> I, then I called it Sega CD when we both met Sonic CD. I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> You're fine, man. But uh, and then you just did it again. You called it fitting into the Sega world, and then you just said, "Let's listen to a Sonic tune." <laughs> I love it. I just did you mean to say that? You know, I did not. <laughs> but it is it is strangely fitting because this is not only a Sega tune; it is a Sonic I tune. I love this episode so far. Uh, the, our Sega Sonic tune. There you go. Is uh, going to be, and for all, this is a throwback to our very favorite Sonic CD. Um, for those of you who are Sonic CD fans, you remember there was an intro video that was just epic. Oh, it was. And when you saw it, remember when we saw that uh, that intro video, we were like, wow. Sonic's just standing there. This and is he's amazing. Like this awesome visage, and then music starts. He starts running, and stuff just happens everywhere. And if it looks like uh, a little Dragon Ball Z-ish, that's because the same person animated it. Yeah, so there's that. Um, the song, I, the only thing I know to call it is Sonic Boom. Yeah, I believe it's called Sonic Boom. Um, yeah, it, and that's because it's the chorus, and it is, uh, it's the intro to the Sonic CD. It is a good song. Uh, my friends and I here have been singing it for years. <laughs> <laughs> it just um, comes out of nowhere because it's, it's amazing. So, here it is, Sonic Boom. Enjoy. Chance, but there is no sun. 
We're back. Yep, that was that was an amazing little ditty there. I love Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom. Um, Strangely, so, not a Street Fighter song. No, not a Street Fighter song. Even though there is a Sonic Boom in Street Fighter, it's also not about uh, uh, jets. <laughs> that wasn't as good as your reference. Um, so let's talk about something else, Sonic. What? What? More Sonic? More Sonic? I just got the anime eyes. You do have the anime eyes. Oh my gosh. There's a little drip. <laughs> the giant drip. <laughs> Hand behind the head, laughing strangely, <laughs> awkwardly. Um, Sonic Generations. Ooh. For Ooh, the. I've, um, I've heard of that. PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Nintendo 3DS. Which is a completely different version, by the way. So, quick aside, don't you think they should change the names on those? I mean, well, what do you mean? I mean, it's like, I've got Sonic Generations. So do I. Did no, you get you it on don't. the PS3? No, I've got it on the 3DS. That's not the same game. <laughs> that is not you even throw close. them in a puddle, puddle and they cry a little bit, but, you know, they need to learn. That's right. <laughs> uh, you got to do it right. Then you say you're sorry, and you bake them a cake. Probably maybe, you know, yeah, apologize, give them flowers. Flowers. I'd take them out to dinner in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't throw someone in a puddle. That's just wrong. Yeah. Where, I mean, where do these puddles come from? Just I don't know where they They show puddles. up when someone's playing Sonic Generations on the 3DS, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> they sure as hell. It's like, hey, do do? You, what are you playing it on? 3DS? <laughs> You're going in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Sonic Generations. Mike, are you excited about Sonic Generations? I am. I this am is, too. This is the first Sonic game I've been excited about in a while. Now, wait a uh, second. What's a while, and what was the last Sonic game you were excited about? The last Sonic game I was excited about was Sonic and the Secret Rings on the Wii. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I was like, what? Sonic's running in a straight line? That's what Sonic's all about. Oh, but, it was not. You had to... The the uh, motion controls in the you game. You had to tilt. Yeah, you That's had to you tilt. Did. And then you and, had to like. Yeah, and you had to, to flip jump. your fa you had to flip your hands into your face to make them jump. Oh yeah, that was that excitement was like, pop the game in. <gasps> Sega. It was pretty looking. Like that's the most I can say for it, really. I then mean, I was like tilting the controller. I'm like, oh, this is kind of frustrating. When I had to. Yeah. Every the first time I hit a wall because I didn't jerk the controller right to jump in time. Oh my gosh! I, the, the, the excitement went down. The enjoyment was just. That game was, is horrible. I, I'm yeah. just gonna say it. That game I did not like it at all, and I played a little too much of it. But it was just just trying to get through it, trying to give it a chance, and just never really caught on with me. But um, Sonic Generations. In Sonic Generations, there are two Sonics. New Sonic and Old Sonic. What's now, up with that, Mike? I don't know. Honestly, I think New Sonic just looks like Sonic. Yeah. Old well, Sonic looks like a baby midget Sonic. I could. I, I agree. Um, the only thing I can really say about Old Sonic that makes him look like Old Sonic is his eyes aren't green. He's a little too pudgy. 
Yeah. It's short. Right? Because we're looking at pictures of him right now. He's lacking in ratitude. He doesn't have as much ratitude as I remember. But, radical stuff has changed, Mike. Yeah. Through the years. Yeah, if I was to look at that in 1990, I might, might be like, that's radical. Right, look, he's Get got that blue creepy spikes. futuristic Sonic out of here with his shoe tread. And green and eyes. Green eyes and face definition. Nah, <laughs> I don't want that. That's right. Give me the little pudgy guy. Yeah, give me the little pudgy Sonic. And give me a corded controller. And you know what else give me? Give me old style Sonic gameplay. I love side-scrolling Sonic. Well, you are in luck. Because this little pudgy Sonic is going to do some side-scrolling gameplay in this game. What? Yes. That is awesome. That, that is one of the most exciting things about Sonic Generations. This is not necessarily new content. This is old content redone for this Right, it's, era. it's a reimagined levels from Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic Adventure. Yeah. And uh, they they've made they've made them 3D. Yeah. So it's kind of a semi uh side scrolling 3D world and I, it looks incredible. Yeah, there's there's uh there's some green hill zone footage around now and that's exciting. That's the first stage from the first game. Yep. There's definitely uh some some water level things. Uh I don't remember that one the name, but I saw some of that, and I saw some of the Sonic Adventure footage. It's half side-scrolling, half 3D, something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's like there's these time warps in the game that actually tie into the story, apparently. There's a whole new evil in this game, so I don't know exactly how much Dr. Robotnik has to do with what, mm -hmm. but he's in the game. We saw him in the trailer, and uh, but there's a new evil afoot, apparently, Yeah. and um, there's time warps where uh, you... Um, and not the uh, not the time warp, but yeah. time warps that you go through and you turn into old Sonic, new Sonic, and when you're new Sonic, it's kind of Sonic Adventure style. It mm -hmm. looks like, uh, or I guess you could say Sonic Colors mm -hmm. is a good is a good way to put it because it's just like Sonic Colors, where it's half side scrolling, and half 3D. And I am tentatively excited about the 3D portion of the game. I've never never felt that. 3D Sonic has been done right. I think As a matter of fact, he's done. He's been done sh ten shades of wrong. Yeah, I um, agree. But this game looks promising. There's no Werehog. He doesn't have a sword. That's right. Um, and yeah. they're not like making him go out into outer space. And I'm not seeing a large cast of players here. I'm seeing Sonic, Sonic, Tails, and Tails. Yep. And I, I really, to be honest, hope they keep it like that. I've heard that Metal Sonic is in there. As a mm -hmm. as a villain, so maybe some Sonic CD uh, remake levels. That'd be nice. That would be cool. Um, I'm all for that. Uh, other players I wouldn't mind seeing in there is Knuckles. You know, not as a player. Knuckles would be a nice unlockable. A good unlockable and just somebody who's he, who's in the in the realm. You know, just I, just like I like trophies now since I've gotten the PlayStation Three. Yep. I've always loved unlockable content. It makes me feel like I've accomplished something. Honestly, I think that's why I love trophies and achievements so much, because I've always loved those games where yep. it's like, if I do this this way, I unlock this mode or this character. And it shows that you've done that. Yeah. You know, there's no denying when you get that trophy that you've actually beaten that game or gotten that score. So. But yeah, so that, I hope there is unlockables, but I think Sega's always pretty good about that kind of stuff. Sonic, Sonic Sega. So One Sega, Gen Sega Generations. Yeah, Sega Generations. Uh, Sega Generations should be just filled with awesome content. Because um, that's what I've come to expect from a Sega game, and they, they're good at delivering, I think. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to pick this up probably day one. Yep, me too, for sure. Pay full price for it. You know, show Sega some love. Uh, I guess... It was developed by Sonic Team. So, Sonic and they haven't... They, they, they've they kind of been out of the... Uh, Sonic making for in the past few games like they really? yeah they haven't made every Sonic game interestingly enough Sonic Team has done other things and let the oh, I can't remember the name of the developer right now but they made Sonic Rush okay which is great it's a great uh, man what is the name of that company it's the people who did the Sonic Racing and the Sonic like Smile Tennis. Bit maybe it's not Smile Bit 
But anyway, now it's Sonic Team again, which is exciting. So yeah. it's the same people that, probably some of the same people that did the Genesis one, literally are still on this team. And that that is awesome. Um, Sonic on the Genesis are some of my earliest, fondest gaming memories. And Look at that. That, that was from Sonic and Knuckles. That, yeah, because it's got the, uh, the bouncing mushrooms. Mushroom Hill Zone. Or wait, Mushroom Hill Zone. what's the name of that? Is it Mushroom Hill? Yeah. I think that's so. That's definitely some more uh, some Sonic and Knuckles content right there. Wow. Because they've got these weird mechanical climbing things. I don't even really know how to describe it. Yeah. Um, the th oh, oh, the pulley thing where you go, ee, 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 yes. and you have to pull down on it continuously, and it'd make you go up on the first level of uh, Sonic and Knuckles. That was really neat. Yeah, Sonic and, and Knuckles was a really cool uh, lock-on game. It was a nice little game, and and it was. This is, I guess, off top topic, but they had, they had that amazing technology where you could lock on and have Knuckles playable character. And was it Sonic Two and Three or Sonic Two and Three? Yep. And if you did it on Sonic One, it would do nothing. Or you could actually hold A, B, and C, push Start. Mm -hmm. When it was saying no way at you, it yeah. would say no way. And then if you hold A, B, and C and push start on any Genesis game that wasn't supposed to work in Sonic and Knuckles, it would take you to a special level. Yeah, it was the, uh, the I, w I just called it the blue ball stage. Yeah, it's the blue ball stage. a little bit suggestive nowadays, I suppose, but um, it, it is the Sonic 3 special stage for Chaos Emeralds. Right. And I've known a couple of people that just love that little mini game. I played I played it a lot. Yeah. And it had really amazing 3D graphics for back in the day. You know, I always like hooked up games to that to see if there was like some kind of special secret. Maybe it'll let me be Sonic in this Barbie game. <laughs> Maybe it'll let me be Sonic in this in the game in Clue. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't know. There there was just <clears throat> and this is really off topic, but I just want to mention it. That that kind of an idea was explored further in a game eventually on the uh, the original PlayStation called Monster Rancher. Yeah. You, you could put any disc into your PlayStation. Yes. I don't know why I said that so slowly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you could put any disc in your PlayStation. It would read uh, the content of that disc, and it would pull a uh, randomized. Well, I mean, it's yep. not randomized. It's based on the content. It's, the yeah, it's based somehow. on the uh, the data. Uh, but it'd pull a monster uh, from the disc, and it, you know it might be common, it might be rare, uh, but yeah, it, you birthed this monster from That's like right. and every disc had a different from monster. your Creed CD, you know. Yep. Yeah, you put Creed in, and it would make this horrific monster. Yeah. It'd make this horrible, horrible uh, monster sound, and then you'd play it on Monster Rancher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it would make a little monster in the game too. And I, I always like to think of it as freeing that monster from the Creed CD that it had been <laughs> trapped in. Um, can you take me higher? Yeah. All right, that's all we can sing. Creed's gonna sue us. <laughs> but <laughs> that's true. But um, I'm getting a yeah. call right now. Um, so I know this is the Sega Stuff podcast, and this is going to reach everybody. So let let me just say that say this now. More of that. I want to I want to pull specialized game content out of the bottom of my shoe somehow. Yeah. Want to scan it? It is cool. Um, <laughs> it is really cool, and they they have a couple things like that. Like Monster Rancher was a really good example. That's the best thing that's done it. I, that's the best way they've done that. Yeah. Um, but they had a Monster Rancher for the Game Boy Advance, which of course you can't plug CDs into. It, it's right. really hard to anyway. I've tried. <laughs> like I keep breaking my favorite CDs. Creed. And um, but no, you, not Creed. Dang Sorry. it. Um, oh, I thought I had another Creed song. I was going to pull it out, but instead I'll just. Uh, Can you take me? Okay. We're getting sued. Wait, wait, wait. With arms wide Thank open. Thank you. Yes, I was, I was. I'll take that with arms wide open. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So, um, <laughs> next week on Creedcast, <laughs> we have the lead singer from Creed. I don't it's even like, know his name. 
<laughs> it's like, sorry, man, we don't know your name. We only know two of your songs, and just barely. He'd be like, with a host lot of whoop. <laughs> like, yes, Everything I love you, man. I'm glad he... we're on this podcast. Yeah, now. that's right. Oh, this podcast just went downhill really fast. <laughs> um, no, but what we were talking about, Sonic Generations is really what we were talking about. And but we were, oh yeah, Monster Rancher, like you said, on the PlayStation One. Um, you could put a CD in and make a monster. Uh, well, on the Game Boy Advance, you couldn't do that. Yeah. But you could... see, what was it? Look up... Like, this... You could, like, look up the numbers on other Game Boy Advance games and put them in. Yeah. That or you type a name in. Oh, okay. You type okay. names in, and, and it uses those characters to make, a, to make a monster. So, you didn't have to actually own anything. You could actually just figure it out and yeah. put the name in and get any monster you wanted. But it was it was a similar idea. Very neat. But Very neat. One epic adventure, two Sonics, Sonic Generations. I'm so uh, excited to play this. Yeah, and I, I've heard that uh, there are certain stages uh, where there will be things that will kind of randomly destroy the terrain and make you choose different paths and things of that nature. That's new. Um, and that's kind of cool. Uh, I think that was based off a, uh, a Sonic Adventure level where a city is being destroyed already. And so, you know. Right. But that's that's kind of a cool thing. Um, I'm excited to play some side-scrolling Sonic. And I just, am too. I, I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I want a good Sonic again. I want Sonic to be the character that, that Mario is. And you haven't that, played Sonic Colors. I haven't. It was, it's Sonic Colors is Wii only? Sonic Colors is Wii only. And also DS. Mm. It's a Nintendo exclusive Sonic. Which uh, makes sense to me, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's fantastic. It's my favorite Sonic game right now. I, I don't know about ever made. It's hard for me to say that because I love Sonic 2 so much. I also like Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. But uh, Sonic Colors has just really brought me back. The side-scrolling is really good, and it's not like old classic Sonic side-scrolling. Mm -hmm. um, the camera pans way out, and you're real small on the screen, and there's a little bit of puzzle elements sometimes, and yeah. you can turn into a drill, a rocket ship, and other stuff like that. I think I've mentioned that before on the podcast, but Sonic Colors and Sonic Generation kind of late seems like more of that, yeah. but a more of a throwback on that, too. Well, and I'll be able to get it because I don't have a Wii. Um, I think the newest Sonic game that I've liked, uh, though I still have issues with it, is Sonic 4. Um, there's a stage that has this ridiculous timing puzzle that just not should not be in a Sonic game. Right. Uh, that that broke it for me. What is so, it? What's what stage is it? Is it is it the casino stage or? It's it's a Egyptian stage. Oh okay. You have to light these torches in a very specific pattern and a very specific timing, and I just can't get past well, that's it. That's really interesting for a Sonic game. Yeah. It, other than that, it was amazing. It was like all the other Sonics, yep. but a little slow though, right? Does does it feel a little like his feet aren't moving as fast as they used to to you, or is it just me? Maybe I think that's kind of like a been like a design choice. Like I don't think they. In, in the new generation, they don't want Sonic to be as fast. They're just like, that might offend people. This yeah. guy's all fast, he's got attitude. It's so a little let too him keep much. The attitude. It's scary. They slowed him down a bit. They don't want to scare you. You need to be able to see what his feet are doing at all times. That's right. So. <laughs> but yeah, um, Sonic 4 has been the last Sonic game I've played, really. And, and enjoyed. Enjoyed, but I'm always hoping. I think this one's. Uh, I think this one's going to be the turnaround. Twenty years yeah. of Sonic has gone into this game, so pretty good. Twenty years. Twenty years old. Sonic the Hedgehog is. Wow. June twenty second. Next year he'll be able to drink. That's right. Next year he'll be able to drink. Who knows what's going to happen then? That's a major downer. Maybe he'll turn into a werehog. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's happened. You know. I feel like this has kind of gone to a bad place. <laughs> I think the point here that we need to make is that Sonic Generations is coming. Yep. And it's going to be good. I agree. It's going to reestablish how awesome Sonic can be, and maybe we'll have some Sonic games in the future that are that are new Sonic content that will blow you away. I feel like that's a possibility. So. We'll separate your socks from your feet. 
Knock your socks exactly. off. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was confused for a second. Um, yeah, it's going to do that. It's going to separate your socks from your feet indeed. So, Hopefully. I, I really just believe it is. I, I do too. I, I think – I think we've got good things coming. They've really been listening to the fans. And and uh, for the next few years, so, uh, Sega is really Sonic. <coughs> <coughs> Sega is really going to focus on um, revamping old games. And who knows what that means. I read that I, on their website. I don't so, know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what other properties I'd they like bring back. I'd like to see a new Streets of Rage. I'd like to see a new Ristar. I'd yeah, like to see more Vector Man, Toe Jam and Earl. There's so yeah, many things Toe that can come Earl? back. Earthworm Jim. I really well, want to see, see that's third party, though. It is third party. I could so see Sega picking that up, though, man. That really needs to be Sega published. But it's, I, I think Rockstar picked it up last. Did they? They made the one. They made Earthworm Jim 3D, and I think that was the last one. Well, they did revamp it recently for Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Yep, and I did buy that one, and it reminded me exactly how hard that game was. Oh, it's so like it's everything, insane. Like everything on the Sega and old consoles yep they used to make some pretty hard games but it was still pretty amazing to have earthworm jim again and i'd like to see that brought back uh i'm, I'm looking for a new shikan the fo the forever man oh man, that game was great yeah i loved it and um have you ever played the game gear one I did not it's fantastic no. check uh, it out um so yeah sonic generations go out and get it exactly when it comes out. Double the speed, double the fun. Two Sonics, one adventure. Two and one. Two, Two for one. one. I don't know. I got nothing else. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, that's been kind of crazy. Uh, so this, this is going to be, I think, episode six of the Sega Stuff podcast. We're dreadfully sorry for the delay last time. And I think we're going to say here officially that this is not going to be a weekly podcast. No, I think it's going to be kind of when we can do it podcast uh, is what's going to end up happening. What I would like to say, and, and I'm saying this is this is what I want, but I'm not making promises here just yet. I'd like to do perhaps a bi-weekly podcast. That would be a lot easier. Um, so we'll look for that. Hopefully... Maybe lengthening the show a little bit if it's bi-weekly even. Yeah. Because yeah. I, could, I could go on forever. <laughs> we could. Uh, we, might, we might start upping the length. We'll see how that goes. But, but we're here today, and this one's in the books, so there's hope for a Sega Stuff Episode 7, much like there's hope for Sonic. That's right. Sonic Stuff. <laughs> So on that note, uh, some some house cleaning. Uh, please, please, please email us at uh, segastuff.com. Thank you very much, Sethifus. Yes. For emailing us today. Which makes you our first emailer. Woohoo! Woo um, yeah, and uh, anybody else that listens and wants to have a Sega question answered, or, you know, even if there's a not Sega question, we might, uh, we might answer it. Yeah. But Try to keep it Sega, please. We've got kind of a central theme going here. That's right. It's supposed to be kind of a Sega thing going on. But, yeah, so for this week and for this last month, I guess, this is Sega Stuff. I am Mike Keltner. I'm Brian Trusty. Uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. Here's our stuff to cut. Here's our stuff to cut. Here's our stuff. Here's our stuff. Here's our stuff to cut. Here's our stuff. Here's our stuff. Cut it. Cut this. Mike's gonna cut this. <laughs>